This here is a prototype for an MPPT controller, or maximum power point tracking, and is made with an Arduino. And please, before you start, have in mind that this is just a prototype and I'm still improving it. Once I test all the parts, make some changes, improve the code and the circuit, I will make a full PCB and share with you the final project. If you need a good and reliable charger for your batteries, please don't use this project yet. But watch this video for learning purposes, and maybe even improve this project yourself. I mean yes, the controller does work, but I can't know for sure how reliable it is. In this video I'll explain the parts of an MPPT controller, the charging process of a 12 volts lead acid battery, the code and the components for this project and show you some results. The controller could keep a constant voltage, constant current, activate or deactivate the load with a relay, have a maximum current limit and print on the screen the voltage, the current and the power values. I really think this is an interesting project that we could improve in future versions. So guys, let's get started. Video sponsored by GLC PCB. They have services for PCB manufacture of 2, 4 or 6 layers, starting from only $2 for 5 PCBs of 100 by 100 mm. Other services are the stainless steel stencil for soldering with solder paste and the SMT assembly where they will solder the components for you automatically using high technology machines for a professional finish. So just go to glcpcb.com. Upload the Gerbers, select what you want and place the order in a couple of minutes. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let's start with a test and then I'll explain you everything. First I connect the battery at the output of the controller and the controller will start. The solar panel voltage is zero because we don't have anything connected yet. To simulate the solar panel I connect my power supply. And as you can see the battery is charging in a bulk mode and the current is limited to 2 amps. But after a while the mode changes to absorption and now the voltage is constant at around 14 volts but the current is getting lower and lower. When the current is low enough we enter the float mode and here we keep a constant voltage of around 13 volts and a very low current and like that we keep the battery charged indefinitely. Ok so now let's see what is this MPPT controller. The MPPT technique is commonly used with wind turbine and solar panel systems to maximize the power extraction under all conditions. Solar panels will give DC output. But this output is not stable. It will depend on the amount of sunlight, the panel power, the temperature and so on. So if you want to power a load, let's say a DC motor, it's not recommended to connect the load directly to the solar panel. What we do is to first charge a battery and then we get the power from the battery and not directly from the solar panel. But to charge the battery and control the power from the panel we need this MPPT controller and that's what we will build today. Please have in mind the charger that we will make today is for lead acid batteries. If you have a solar panel system with LiPo or Lion batteries you will need a balanced charger and connections to each cell. The MPPT controller is in charge of charging the battery in different modes. Protect both the battery and the solar panel of overcurrent. Enable or disable the load when the battery is under voltage and also keep track of the charge capacity. This type of batteries require three stages of charging. When the battery is discharged we first start in the bulk mode at a constant current that is set by the battery manufacturer. In this mode the battery will charge up to around 80%. When we reach a certain voltage we then pass to the absorption stage. In this mode we don't have a constant current anymore but a constant voltage. The voltage is kept by the controller at a specific value and then we'll see the current getting lower and lower while the battery is charging the last 20%. When the current flow gets below a certain value we enter the last stage which is called float mode. In this mode the controller reduces the voltage to another preset value and keeps the current flow to less than 1% of the battery capacity. This will keep the battery fully charged indefinitely. In my case I have a 12 volts battery. For this battery the bulk maximum voltage is 14.6 volts and the charging current of 2 amps. 
when 14.6 volts are reached, we enter the absorption mode, and we keep this value till the current drops below let's say 100 milliamps. Then we enter the float mode, and we keep the battery at 13.7 volts indefinitely, at a very low current flow. I don't have a huge solar panel, because I live in an apartment. So to simulate a solar panel, I will use my power supply. Usually you can buy these panels of 12 volts, 24 volts or 36 volts. But remember that this voltage will be affected by the sunlight, the temperature and so on. So now that we know what we have to do, let's build the controller. So what are the parts that we have in an MPPT system? We need a microcontroller that will be able to read the input and the output voltage, the current values and process all the calculations. Of course the Arduino will do that. Then we need a variable buck converter that will be able to regulate the output voltage and keep it constant. We will make this circuit ourselves and control it with a PWM signal from the Arduino. We also need a current sensor in order to read and limit the current value. For that I will use the module ACS712. We also need a relay or a MOSFET that will be used to enable or disable the load. For the buck converter circuit I will use a 33 microhenries inductor that could handle high current. We need a screen where we could print the values. I will use this 20 by 4 LCD. We should also have a fixed value buck converter set to 5 volts and that will supply the Arduino. For that I will use this very small 2 amps buck converter. I will set it to 5 volts and then I will glue the potentiometer so it will stay at that voltage. Ok so please check the parts and the schematic below. Also have in mind that in a future version I will add some more features to my controller, such as an SD card reader so we could store the charging data to an SD card. We could add a second current sensor at the output so we could compare the power and calculate the efficiency. We could also add some push buttons so we could set the limits with buttons without having to upload a different code. Ok so let's start. This is my schematic for today. I will use a buck converter configuration like this one, with the MOSFET controlling the switch, a coil, a diode and a capacitor. To see all the values see the schematic below. I've also placed a second diode at the output of the buck converter for protection, so the voltage from the battery won't go backwards. To control the MOSFET for now I'm using a BJT driver but I'm also making some tests for the next version using a half-bridge MOSFET driver and two MOSFETs. The input from the solar panel is connected to the current sensor, so we could measure the current flow. Only the input current flow, for the output power we should add a second sensor but I don't have that for now. Then we have a relay at the output that is controlled with another BJT transistor and also a green LED as an indicator. I have connections for the LCD screen and the Arduino. I also placed a small buck converter that is set previously to 5 volts. Follow the schematic and make all the connections for this prototype. And in my case I've used a piece of prototyping PCB and solder everything on it. I've used female pins so in case that I damage something I could change it easily. Remember that this is still a prototype and I will make a lot of tests. So for example if the MOSFET will get burned I won't have to desolder it and then solder a new one. I also make sure to add a small heat dissipator on the MOSFET, which by the way if this wasn't a prototype it should be a lot bigger. To read the voltage I'll use a voltage divider. Voltage could be up to 36 volts from the solar panel, so we can read that directly with the Arduino. So with the 1K and the 7K resistor I make a voltage divider and lower the value to under 5 volts for the Arduino ADC. Ok now let's make some tests. I upload the small code that will limit the current to 1 amp. I now connect the battery at the output and the controller starts, because we have the small 5 volts buck converter to supply everything. I now connect 36 volts at the input simulating the solar panel voltage. In this mode we don't care about the voltage, only about the current value. So as you can see only 1 amp is flowing from the supply. The limit of the power supply is set to 2 amps, but only 1 amp is flowing to the battery. So how this works? Well if the Arduino detects with the sensor that the current value is higher than 1 amp, it will lower the PWM signal applied to the MOSFET. And if the current value is lower than 1 amp, it will increase the duty cycle. So we do this fast enough 
so the current will stay at that value. Now I upload another code that will keep the voltage at the constant value. I set it to 12 volts. I connect 36 volts at the input, but the voltage at the output is always 12 volts as you can see. Even if we add a load that will draw a lot of current, the voltage is still 12 volts. The only thing that will change is the PWM signal. So that easy we can control the voltage and the current just by changing the PWM duty cycle that is connected to the buck converter MOSFET. So controlling the current and the voltage we can make our code for the MPPT. So remember from the beginning that we have three stages, the bulk stage, the absorption and the float stage for the battery charging process. In bulk we limit the current and we don't care about the voltage while the battery is charging up. And then in absorption we keep a constant voltage and the current value will drop and drop. And finally in the float mode we keep a constant lower voltage and a very low current value. So now let's see the code and understand how we do that. We start the code by importing the LCD libraries and also creating the icons for the display. Then I define all the constants in the code. If you have a battery with different specifications, you will have to change these values here. For example, I have a current limit for my battery of 2 amps and I've also set the bulk voltage to 14.6. In the setup loop, we change the frequency of the PWM signal because by default that is very slow. We need to use high frequency for the buck converter. We define the inputs and the outputs. Ok, now we start the void loop and first we read all the values using these functions. The input current, the input voltage and the output voltage. We also calculate the input power. I define these functions below here and in my case I will make 10 samples in order to get more accurate readings. For safety, if the battery voltage is below a certain value, we disable the load output with the relay so we protect the battery for under voltage. Ok, so when we are into bulk mode, we control the current and we keep it under the limit defined before at the beginning of the code. When the voltage will reach the maximum bulk value, we switch the mode to absorption. And here we control and keep the voltage at the same value till the current drops to the minimum value. Once we reach that value, we switch to float mode and here we keep a different and lower constant voltage at a very low current flow. But what about when we connect a load while the battery is charging? For that we need a maximum current limit. When I connect a load to the battery, part of the current will come from that battery but maybe another part will come from the controller. So it will be your job to define the limits of your controller. Obviously if the maximum current the controller could handle is 2 amps and you connect a huge motor that needs 10 amps, you might damage the controller. For that in the code, anytime the maximum current is reached in any of the modes, we lower the PWM signal. And by the way, to lower the PWM signal, we actually increase the PWM value. And that's because I'm controlling the MOSFET with a BJT transistor at the gate and that will act as an inverter. So when the PWM signal is high, the BJT output is low and vice versa, so have that in mind. And finally with these lines of code, I print the values to the LCD screen. I upload this code and give it a final test. I connect the battery at the output. The small buck converter supplies 5 volts and powers the Arduino and the rest. Till I don't connect the power at the input, the battery is not charging. So to simulate a 25 volt solar panel, I will use my power supply. So I connect the voltage at the input. So as you can see, the current is limited to 2 amps, because we start in bulk mode. After a while, when we reach 14.6 volts, we change to absorption and now the current is slowly dropping. In 1 hour or so, the current dropped to below 1 amp. Finally we get to float mode and we keep a constant 13 volts as defined in the code and the current is very low, just 100 mA or so, so that's the charging cycle. When the battery is disconnected or the voltage drops below the value set in the code, the process resets and we charge back the battery. Please read more in the code and also on electronics.com and wait for the future version with more tests results and improvements. I don't recommend this circuit yet, but I hope that you like this video and more important that you have learned something new about MPPTs, about battery charging and the buck converters. If so give it a like and subscribe and if you consider supporting this kind of work check my Patreon page. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, Electroloops here. 
I hope that you really enjoyed this video and that you have learned something new. And if so, consider subscribing and maybe hit the notification bell and leave a like. And also I, wa I wanted to thank you to all our Patreons because as you know, uh, I, I buy a lot of modules, Arduinos and stuff for the project. So with your help on Patreon, I will have more time and more money to buy these modules and make more projects like this one and keep these videos going. So thank you very much once again. If you want to support me, you have the link for my Patreon below. So go check that out. And also you can uh, just join the community on electrons.io, subscribe to this channel and maybe follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you very much and keep up you guys.